Mr. Johnston's decision uh, to step aside gives all of us a chance to sort of work in a more collaborative way. And I'm certainly not starting this week pessimistically. And I hope that that optimism can lead us to quickly finding a way forward. We can do that. That is absolutely something achievable to lay out the criteria and to come to a consensus around who is chosen. David Johnston is out as special rapporteur on elections meddling and the feds are once again insisting all options are on the table going forward. The opposition wants a public inquiry but it sounds like they'll need to reach a consensus to get one. Let's bring in the front bench to unpack the latest on this. Miriam Monsef is the CEO of Onward and a former Liberal cabinet minister. Melanie Paradis is former communications director to Erin O'Toole. She's now the president of Texture Communications. Kathleen Monk is former director of communications to the late Jack Layton. She's now the principal owner of Monk and Associates and Laura Stone is a Queen's Park reporter for the Globe and Mail. Hi, everybody. Good to see yeah. you tonight. Uh, Kathleen, I, I don't know if you noticed, but it was like my eyes were wide, my jaw was dropped. I have not heard people in either the government or the opposition speak this way about this issue since the day that it started. Like, there is a massive pivot communications-wise happening. Everyone's optimistic for and sure. everyone wants to work together. What the heck happened? <laughs> My question is, why couldn't you have cooperated for the last three months? I mean, we really have wasted three months. Three months um, since Johnson was appointed on March 15th to, to really to last Friday when he, when he resigned. But it is giving us an option now to kind of turn the page. And maybe it will give us the ability to focus on actually looking at the issue of foreign interference and not just kind of, you know, throwing, you know, bomb after bomb on reputational bomb to, to Mr. Johnson himself. I mean, I think really the turning point, though, Vashi, for me, was the testimony on June the 6th when, mm -hmm. when Mr. Johnson went and was actually questioned, when we realized that maybe there were some discrepancies in terms of what he was reporting and what his report said converse to actually what, for instance, Aaron O'Toole had been heard, heard directly from CSIS in terms of that analysis. So now we have to move forward, do the analysis, get it going, uh, lock all of the opposition rumors with, uh, excuse me, opposition leaders with, <laughs> with the with the government in a room. Figure out who's going to do this, and as Dominic Blanc said time and time again today, figure out who's going to do it, what are the terms, and when it will get done. It's just interesting that everybody, Laura, is willing to do that all of a sudden because you and I, as reporters, have been questioning <laughs> politicians on all sides for months and months and months about the prospects for that, and it really didn't seem like they were very high. And it is like a, it's like everybody sat down over the weekend and said like we need to move on the polls have showed that like we got what we could out of this and and now like let's all be productive yeah i think the key point there is polls i'm not privy to to any of these internal polls or or party polling but um, it seems to me and i've said this i think we've talked about this on your radio show as well vashi i don't think the liberals are that concerned anymore i think they've sort of seen this issue play out. We've seen the government uh, turn the spotlight more on the opposition leaders, particularly conservative leader Pierre Polyev and his behavior and how he's dealt with this issue and the fact that he was refusing to, to take this uh, confidential uh, briefing as some sort of willful blindness on the issue. Um, and, and I think they've kind of turned turn the gaze. It's not necessarily just about them anymore. And they broadened it out. I mean, Yes, they're willing to work together in theory, but it sounds like the Liberals here are playing a bit of a game of chicken with the opposition, saying, oh, you think it's so easy to, to, to just start a public inquiry on this highly sensitive issue and which documents are, are going to be made public and which person, if David Johnston wasn't good enough for you, who are you three going to agree on to, to, to do this process? Uh, and how long will it take? What are the terms? So, uh, you know, while they are kind of playing well to get playing well with others um, on your show and maybe what they're saying, I think uh, you know, the liberals have sort of seen here, OK, maybe it's not resonating beyond certain party party groups. We have people, you know, on all sides of the spectrum who are taking this very seriously. Canadians are maybe aware of the issue, but maybe it's not really penetrating in the way as we head into summer break, economic issues at, are at the forefront. Maybe the Liberals here just don't seem as concerned about this issue as maybe they did a couple of months ago. I think that you, yeah, I think you could say even in the way, though, Pierre Polyev responded yesterday to the calls or sort of whatever you want to call it from the government, Miriam, uh, that, that the opposition, in particular the Conservatives, are, you know, want to pivot as well. Like, he, he was not sort of taking the bait and saying, we'd never agree on anything. He's like, I want to cooperate, sure, I'll get into the discussion, which again sort of diffuses the, the, the how, how highly political it's all been. Well, yeah, certainly this issue took up a lot of political oxygen and the opposition got their way. 
it's now going to be interesting to see the level of seriousness that we're going to see from the opposition, particularly Mr. Polyev, as Laura said. Is he going to take the briefing so that the solutions he proposes are based on facts? And moving forward, will the opposition focus more on results that protect the integrity of our elections, that address foreign interference, or will there continue to be uh, disagreements about process? I'm particularly interested in seeing who amongst Canadians who watched what happened to Mr. Johnston will have the courage to put up their hand and say, pick me for this job. I very much look forward to helping all parties solve this. Yeah, I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing who that person yeah. is from, from both of us. I think that I think um, Melanie that similar questions can be asked of the opposition. I mean, sorry, of the of the government, right? I think everybody at this point is like, what is what are you willing to do to produce results to fill legislative gaps that have already like so much stuff has already been identified, and what will the process look like? I think the one sort of encouraging thing today that we heard is like Minister LeBlanc say this isn't going to be weeks down the road, days or a week, and we'll have some sort of conclusion. I think they need to make good on that. That, to, to mm. keep sort of quelling the politics around this. Absolutely, but ideally the person that they agree to appoint next is a judge and that this is in a public inquiry. Um, the authority for calling an inquiry has always been the Prime Minister's authority. He may have appeared to have delegated to David Johnston, but it was always his and it's back in his lap again. It's up to him to decide whether to call an inquiry or not. I hope that he does. Um, but to your point, it's really important that other that we get the ball in motion in terms of trying to resolve matters of foreign interference before the next election, which I'm concerned there could be one called as soon as the fall. And if we haven't started to make progress on any of this, then we could end up in a situation where we have to go to the polls and Canadians still don't know whether foreign interference is having a significant impact on our democratic processes or not. And we need to rectify that right away. Do you think it lasts, uh, Kathleen, the sort of political goodwill? I, I think, um, I, I just want to comment on something Laura said. She was, they're smart. The Liberals are smart to kind of push this back on the opposition. It's a great a great move by them, but but they're going to have to actually take the medicine. They're going to have to get this solved within the next two weeks before the Parliament rises. So when LeBlanc says 10 days, I actually believe him. I think that he'll actually have to appoint somebody soon. Uh, the government will have to appoint somebody soon, and hopefully we'll actually see some action before September and Parliament resumes. To kind of uh, jump off of both, Mel Melanie and Kathleen's points, uh, Laura, is there, uh, and I think I said it this way to the minister yesterday, is there any world in which a public inquiry doesn't happen? It's the same political question we've been asking for a long time, but now even from a pragmatic perspective, uh, is there any other option? Uh, I don't want to say no, because I think we've seen this really drag out in ways we didn't expect. So I think it's all, all signs point to a public inquiry. Could I say with absolute certainty on your television show right now that it will be a public inquiry? <laughs> I cannot, because the Liberals can't even say that, right? They, they're not being definitive at the moment. They're looking to the opposition to, to, you know, to work with them and come up with this. But um, I think, you know, kind of another interesting angle too is, are we just focusing on China? Are we looking at other countries? How far back are we going? So, you know, this, this is really complex. Um, but also, again, all sides point to public inquiry. I can't say for sure that that's what's going to happen.